heads big enough for the big finale look, because I was, oh hey, ha, well my finger do here, with the finger do review of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 9, Episode 7, and all I need to say is, Jorge, drink me, why is it blue, what's it called, the big blue do, all right, sweet beats, it's big and dewy, all right, so, let's get to it. The Queen said goodbye to Cynthia Lee Fontaine for like half a second and then Trinity pooed all over it, didn't she? She was all, I'm the new cuckoo in town. Bye, Felicia, bye. I gotta win this thing. I feel sorry for any of those queens that get in between Trinity and that crown, especially now that uh, Alexis Michelle has won the challenge. I was very happy to see Valentina come out of her fairy Disney princess fog long enough to go. It's all gonna be about Alexis Michelle. She's not stupid, you can see. She's got things, she's watching people. She knows what's going on over there at Camp Alexis Michelle. She is not impressed and she is not gonna be tripped up by it. So RuPaul showed up to give them this week's main challenge, which was 9021 Ho. Now I need to admit a few things to you people. I never watched 90210. I don't know who any of these people are. Whenever I see Tori Spelling, I go, no. That's it, that's my only, I don't know what the show, I never watched it. So, uh, the girls had to do 90210. Now, because Peppa slayed that lip thing, she got to cast the show. Now, I thought she would have one, learned a few things from Alexis Michelle giving her Britney Spears the last time, but no, she's very diplomatic. Very, very user-friendly, not threatened by any of the girls whatsoever. She's like, what would you like to do? Well, the girls all told her what she liked to do. And it seemed the only person she wasn't listening to was Aja. She gave her some other character she didn't like because she was old. She wanted to play the hair-flipping bitch because uh, just a hair flipping bitch, I guess it's easy, not a stretch. Either way, it was very, very disruptive to the, the room because Aja was all, I don't want to be that girl, and I'm all like, well, it's too late, you are that girl. But Shea kool was all, oh, let's just make everything easy for everyone. I'll do the character she doesn't want to do. She can do the character I couldn't care less about. And Pep was all, well, I don't care either. Let's just keep Aja quiet because if she goes for one more smoke break, I'm going to lose my friggin' mind. And then Aja was all, well, I don't want you making concessions for me. And then I was all, give me another drink, Jorge, because this bitch is making me cray cray. And then the girls went on to the rehearsal. The big disappointments were, of course, Nina Benina and her downtown brown attitude. But here's the thing about Nina Benina Brown that made me laugh. She scared those two white girls. That Tori Spelling was making her money that day, I'll tell you what, she was scared of her and so was that Jenny Garth. They were shaking in their boots. And that's how you end up at the bottom too. Nina wasn't the only girl that had trouble with the acting. Ferret seemed to have a little bit of trouble too until Trinity came along and then maybe the fact that they were playing the same character more or less helped Sarah out. And they finished the taping. It was back to the workroom to get ready for this week's main runway challenge of Big Fabulous Hair, which is why I'm all neon haired out. Uh, but, is anyone else getting sick and tired of this? It's no longer the workroom at RuPaul's Drag Race. It's become Oprah and Friends. I mean, last week everyone had an eating disorder. This week everyone had a sad, sad tale about cancer. And I have to say, Trinity talking about her mom dying when she was young and then her grandmother right after. I mean, I have to tell you, it wasn't really good. If any of this keeps going, I'm gonna need much more than a big blue dude to get me through this. It's far too emotional for me. So serious. I'm gonna just say it right now. Valentina doesn't get top three uh, fix. Seriously, she looked fantastic. She was in character the whole time. She wasn't disruptive to the process at all. She did her best. So funny. And that runway look was spectacular, I am just saying. I have to say, I'm surprised that she beat, that she wasn't, uh, she didn't beat out Trinity. But that said, I think if another girl gets in Trinity's way, she might get shipped. So good for Valentina. She, saving her moment to move ahead. The other girl that did well, well, surprise, surprise, Shea Coulee. I mean, seriously, she took over a character that nobody wanted to do, Aja, and then did it beautifully while the other people did crappy character in person, Aja. And, and good for Shea, and especially playing that dried up old pregnant character because when she came down that runway all chewy and dewy and yummy and bummy and hair and jacket, I like the fact that Michelle Visage said, normally I don't like this look. Now here's why she said this. She's right most of the time. Girls walked out in, in a swimsuit and a jacket, they think they're all that in a bag of chips. No, 
Shea Coulee is all that, a bag of chips, a little, uh, a bit of ketchup, not in the packet, but a squeezy bottle, and a float on the side. Well, that right there, I'm surprised she didn't win. No offense, I thought she looked better than Trinity on the runway. Now, I don't want you to get the impression I don't like Trinity. I love Trinity, I think she's good. I didn't really like her runway look. But Aja, gee whiz, it's a shame that she ended up in the bottom two this week because she finally looked like she was gonna handle on her face, eh? I mean, seriously, there was some blending, there was some skin tones from this planet. It was a very good job on her part, and that outfit was delish. And when it was announced that her and Nina were gonna be in the bottom two, well, didn't you all just have a minute where you were like, well, bye, Nina, bye. She's gonna kill you, bye. Now here's the thing, I've seen Nina's videos with her performing, she can dance, she's a good performer, she knows how to lip sync. And I have seen Aja, she, Aja was one of my top choices for top four. As we've proven, I'm not very good at picking the top four, so we're gonna stop listening to me. But Aja is a fantastic dancer. We saw her in the last lip sync she was in. She killed it! She made that volcano weirdness all look great on that catwalk in her lip sync. So there was a moment for me where I was afraid that Nina was gonna go home, but I was disappointed by Aja. She didn't seem to bring it like the last time. And the fact that this was her second time in the bottom, that she is only now seeming to pull her face out of whatever fire she's using her blending powder from, I don't know what it is, uh, it is a little too late for Aja. And unfortunately, she was the one who had to go home this week, but Miss Nina is the uh, saved doll and good for her. Maybe this is the last kick in the ass she needs to brighten up that smile and turn that frown upside down. Because let me just say, I love to be some Nina Brown, but if she doesn't pick it up, I'm gonna kick her off a of RuPaul's Drag Race, I'll tell you what. So, who do you think's next to go? It could be anybody's game. Nina's on the bubble, Farrah's still clinging on. If she got one more good outfit in that bag, then she's good to go, I'll tell you what. But, seriously, you're gonna have to tune into Out TV and Out TV Go to find out who goes home next. And then when you're done, come on back and see me. And you and I'll compare notes. Till next week, miss me! Mwah! Seriously, Farhan, I love this late blue gym.